Um, while Romeo are back with another lesson. Uh, first and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Baharu Kakodash, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught me this truth. Shalom to you, Aki and Akwaf, that believe and have faith in Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, in these last days, praying to be part of the hopeful elect. Uh, as you see, man, we're getting closer and closer daily to the Battle of Armageddon and the destruction of Babylon itself. This is a uh, this uh, um, the title of an article I pulled off of a, off a line. It says Putin ally warns of apocalypse with effects of global nuclear catastrophe lasting centuries until the rubble ceases to emit radiation if the West continues to send arms to Ukraine. That's plain, man. Nuclear war has never been close as it as it has been in this day and time, man. Here's another article. It says U.S., Poland, and, and, uh, and Germany may soon hold joint maneuvers in preparation for a large-scale conflict. So the war is coming, man. The Lord, the war is coming. We know that it's one major prophecy that has to take effect before it really commits to be an all-out war, the Battle of Armageddon, in the return of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh, Mahashem, Yahweh Shah. A U.S. nuclear-powered submarine has arrived in South Korea for an apparent show of force and a warning towards North Korea. The 6,000-ton Los Angeles-class fast attack submarine USS Springfield docked at the naval base in the southern port city of Busan. This rare disclosure of the submarine's deployment to the south appears intended to send a stern warning to North Korea following repeated missile provocations. So a U.S. has sent a uh, submarine, a nuclear submarine, to South Korea. Iranian warships IRS Macron and IRS Daniel have docked in Rio de Janeiro Sunday morning after Brazilian President Lola da Silva's government granted permission despite pressure from the U.S. to bar them. Originally, it was reported that Brazil had bowed to U.S. pressure and declined Iran's request. However, something has changed. Make sure to follow for further updates. So they're, 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 uh, Iran is sending their military hardware to South America, man. We're seeing events in European capitals and institutions focused on how best to dismember and destroy our country. It was Russia, on the eve of the Ukrainian crisis, which consistently proposed to the West to sign agreements on mutual security guarantees. All of them were arrogantly rejected. As a result, the world is now teetering on the brink of a suicidal conflict, which the EU, together with the rest of the West, is moving towards by stepping up arms supplies to the Kiev regime and increasing its involvement. It is claimed that NATO and the EU will use all political, economic and military means in the interests of their one billion citizens. The rest of the world is seen as a hostile environment that must be reformatted with these very tools. There were a number of countries that voted against the resolution and another number of countries, even larger, who made the decision to abstain and not vote for this resolution condemning Russia and calling for Russia to immediately withdraw its forces. Now, uh, the representative of India, when she spoke before the General Assembly, uh, she made a point of explaining why it was that India had chosen to abstain and some of the very serious concerns countries have about this resolution. Today, as the General Assembly marks a year of the Ukrainian conflict, it is important that we ask ourselves a few pertinent questions. Are we anywhere near a possible solution acceptable to both sides? Can any process that does not involve either of the two sides ever lead to a credible and meaningful solution? Has the UN system and particularly its principal organ, the UN Security Council, based on a 1945 world construct, not been rendered ineffective? Now, it's also important to note that we have heard remarks from the representative of Hungary prior to the vote that also were somewhat insightful as to what's going on and the feelings across the world. We can save lives of the people by creating peace. And based on our experience, it became already pretty obvious that neither delivery of weapons nor sanctions, those measures do not save lives. To the contrary, they contribute to the prolongation and the risk of escalation of this war, and they bring more suffering. 
United Nations have been created to serve as a platform for dialogue for those who even consider each other as enemies. Therefore, we urge talks between Russia and the United States to be started as soon as possible in the framework of the United Nations. We do not want the world to be divided into blocks again. Instead of blocks, we want connectivity and cooperation. And we do not want this regional war to become a global one. Now a number of countries in Africa chose to abstain and not vote for or against the resolution. And we have previously heard from Russian officials about how they feel that one-sided resolutions such as this are simply serving propaganda purposes for the United States and they don't get the world any closer to seeing a resolution to the conflict. These things, they can't, they can't reverse. And I've said that several times. They can't reverse what the Lord has stirred up in their minds to do. And the Lord is uh, stirring them up, man. He's uh, stirred up the Medes, man, which is the Russians. And they're ready to fight. They continue to say every day, man, let's, let's stop sending weapons. And they said, like a guy said in the beginning of the video, he said, man, uh, they're not going to stop sending the weapons, man. You know, the article said they're ready to send the missiles over here and destroy this place where it won't impl em em emit nu <laughs> nuclear, we uh, nuclear waste, man. This is Isaiah 31. I'm going to drop down to verse 30. I'm going to drop down to verse 5. It says, As birds flying, so will Yahweh Bashem Yahweh host defend Jerusalem. Defending also, he will deliver it and, and passing over, he will preserve it, man. And that's talking about the children of Israel. Let me get it in another get it in another translation. This is New Living Translation. It says, Yahweh Bashem Yahushah of, of the heaven's army will hover over Jerusalem and protect it like a bird protected its nest. He will defend and save the city. He will pass over it and rescue it. And that's talking about the children of Israel. He's going to protect us, the hopeful elect. He's going to protect us in the land of our captivity, man, here in America, man, Babylon the Great. This is the Good News Translation. These are my two favorite ones. It says, just, just as the bird hovers over its nest to protect its young, so I, Yahweh Bashem Yahushua Almighty, will protect Jerusalem and defend it. So the Lord is going to defend the children of Israel. Just like he says in uh, what D Daniel's uh, in Revelation, in Revelation 12, about uh, Michael, the great angel, um, Michael is going to stand up for the children of Israel. So the Lord is going to stand up and protect the children of Israel, man. And war is a sign that the Lord is returning. And he's going to be with the, with his men in that day. Uh, again, uh, Isaiah 31, verse 5, it says, As as birds flying, so will Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shav host defend Jerusalem. Defending also, he will deliver it and pass it over. He will preserve it, man. Turn ye unto him from whom the children of Israel have deeply revolted. So the Lord telling you to return unto him. Yahweh Bashem Yahushah. Because you have revolted against him. It says, for in that day, every man shall cast away his silver, his, like his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which your own hands have made unto you. For a sin, and that's talking about you believing in your money, your stature here in the Babylon the Great, which the Lord is truly against this place, man. He's truly against America. And no one can say he has no uh, no reason to be. Or why would the Lord be against America, Babylon the Great? Why would he be against this? This is um, one of the wickedest kingdoms ever established on the face of the earth. This is Deuteronomy 32, and I'm going to start at verse 11. It says, As an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttering over her uh, over her young, spreading abroad her wings, taking them, bearing them, bearing them on her wings, so Yahweh by Shemiah alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. So the Lord is telling you he's going to do these things, man. There's no other strange, there's no strange God with Yahweh by Shem Yahushah. The Lord is going to lead the children of Israel out of captivity a second time. And that's not the whole nation of Israel, just the hopeful elect is going to be led away from this place. 
And and you'll see why, man, because these people, uh, the two-thirds of our people have revolted against you. How about Shemel Shah? They haven't returned. After all the many lessons we have done, have the uh, prophesied on the highways and byways, they still haven't returned to you. How about Shemel Shah? I'm going to drop down to verse 16. It says, they provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. And that's Cesar Borgia, who the world calls Jesus. That's a strange God to Yahweh by Shem Shah because he gave us Yahweh Shah. He says, with abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrifice unto devils and not to power and to gods whom they knew not and to new gods that came up, came newly up whom their, your fathers feared not. So the Lord knew that we didn't believe in nobody but him in the ancient world, man. When the time of Moses, in the time of uh, um, Lot, time of um, all the all the mighty men of, of Yahweh B'Shem Yahshua, the time of Daniel, Solomon, they only believed in Yahweh B'Shem Yahshua and no other gods. These gods, Cesar Bozier, which the world called Jesus, they came up newly. Allah, Buddha, all these are new gods that cre was created by our adversaries, man. Our powers, Yahweh B'Shem Yahshua, of the rock. Let me slock it. Let me. Yeah, yeah. Of the rock that begot thee, thou art unmindful and has forgotten power that formed thee. So they were mindful of Yahweh B'Shem Yahshua, who we prophesy. They weren't mindful of our Lord. And when Yahweh B'Shem Yahshua saw it, he abhorred them. So basically, the Lord hated them, man. And he, it is at this time right now, man. He hates these people because they haven't returned, man. They believe in Esau, they believe in the God of Esau, man. It says, because of the provoking of his sons and his daughters. So our people sacrifice their children to, to these gods, man. Going to church and making them pray to um, Cesar Bourgeois, the so-called white Jesus. And celebrate Easter and all these pagan holidays, man. They're sacrificing their children to, to, these, uh, to these gods, man. It was in the ancient world, but they've newly cre they newly created them. They brung them back up and put another name on them. Verse 20, it says... And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very forward generation, children in whom is no faith. And that's our people, man. They can't see what we're prophesying and preaching is the, the Lord, man. The most high power, man. The, the creator of all things. They can't see that's Yahweh B'Shem Yahweh But the hopeful elect see that our Lord is Yahweh B'Shem Yahweh so-called black man from the tribe of Judah, man, that's coming back to bring havoc on our enemies. And two-thirds of our people won't get it. As much as we preach it, much as we pass information out and, and um, continue to uh, have our people to repent, they won't repent, man. And that's the Lord has them blinded, has angels blinding them so they can't see it because he will have to um, basically take them scales off their eyes and wash them, man, cleanse them. But he want to see how the end is going to be since they didn't repent. This is uh, 2 Kings 19. I'm starting at verse 34. It says, For I will defend this city to save it for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. So the Lord is going to defend the hopeful elect, man, for his his, his sake and for David's sake, man, because he, he, um, he made his promise to him. This is Amos. Amos uh, 9, and I'm going to drop down to verse 11. It says, In that day will I ra raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close the breaches thereof. And, 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 and the Lord is, that's who's going to be redeemed in the time that's coming. The house of David, man, the tabernacle of David. And so basically, uh, as apostles go into, it's the house of David and the house of Saul, man. And you should know by now what happened to the house of Saul. It was destroyed. But the house of David is, gonna be, is being rebuilt right before our eyes, man. And Lord willing, I'm a part of that hopeful elect that's, that's uh, being rebuilt in the name and power of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. It says, verse 11 again, it says, And in that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old. So the Lord is building us back up as we were in the ancient world, man. David was a mighty man. And you can you know, go back into Kings, Chronicles, 
and uh, you know, a couple other um, um, document, uh, you know, basically, you know, this documented of King David being a mighty man. David, um, the Lord loved David. Verse 12, it says that they may possess the remnant of Edom. So the Lord is raising us up so we can possess the, the remnant of Edom, man. Who the Edomites is, is, is not destroyed in the time the nuclear missiles come, man. And that's going into those elite that's going to be put in slavery, man. Hardcore bondage for a thousand years and then bring back their nation. And they, they, they're going to be utterly wasted after those thousand years. That they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen which are called by my name, said Yahweh by Shem Shah, that doeth this. So the Lord is going to do this, man. These Edomites are going to fight, and it's going to all it's all being done by the hand of Yahweh by Shem Shah. And he's doing this because it's going to be a this is going to be an inheritance to Yahweh by Shem Shah. The heathen, he's going to possess the heathen. That's one of the basically one of the gifts. That the Lord has given you, Yahweh Shah, man, in the hopeful elect. To be rulers and kings, we're gonna have servants. And that's what um, and that's how you know that somebody's in rulership when they have servants. And we're gonna be king and priests again, man. And that's what basically that's what the Lord is rebuilding. So the man you see that believe and have faith in you, how about Shem Yahweh Shah, that's calling on the right name and is in the right spirit. Like I say, I always say, um, through the man, I believe through the doctrine of Great Millstone. That I've been, you know, following for uh, for many years, man, going on eight years now. And I believe that doctrine that Yahweh Shem Yahusha blessed the apostles to have, man, to preach to us young brothers, man, just coming up in this faith and believing and having faith in Yahweh Shem Yahusha, man. This is the way. You know, what I'm saying that's a scripture, roughly paraphrasing. This is the way. Walk ye in it, man. And I heard that. I heard Lord willing that I can endure to the end, man. But I heard that that voice, man. This is the way. Those men are the way to Yahweh Shem Yahusha. That straight and narrow gate. This is uh, Acts 15, and I'm going to start at verse 15. To this, and to this agree the words of the prophets, as it is written, after this I will return, and I will build again the tabernacle of David. See, we are being built right before Esau's eyes, man. They, they're trying to build a physical temple, but the physical temple is the man of the Lord, man, that was back with King David. And Lord willing, like I said, I always say I try to put myself, because I don't know, you know what I'm saying? Nobody knows. But um, Lord willing, we, I was back there with those men, as well as the apostles, the elders, and the men that believe and have faith in Yahweh by Shem Yahusha, that's following that same doctrine. It says, um, again, it says, after this I will, re I will return and build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down, and I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. See that? The Lord is setting this up, man, right before the Edomites in these nations' eyes, man. We are going to be redeemed by Yahweh by Shem Yahusha. It says that the re residue of men might seek after Yahweh by Shem Yahusha. So we 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 are preaching that other men that see us preaching on the highways and byways is wearing these uh, you know um, wearing these garments. You know people think it's, uh, it's it's a reason why we wear the garments because it's a representation of what we was in the ancient world. So we wear the garments and the fringes to look down on us not to sin. So basically, these we are the residue of Yahweh by Shem Yahshua showing these other other Israelites this is the way to to go, man, to get back to Yahweh by Shem Yahshua, man. It says that the residue of men might seek after Yahweh by Shem Yahshua. So you see us doing it, you should want to inquire why why are these men why are these men doing this? Why why are they believe so much in uh, Yahweh by Shem Yahshua? Why they change, when basically we didn't change the name, why they don't believe what these churches say? Why are they following after this, this, um, this, why are they following this way? But most people don't inquire the things that we are doing, man, because the Lord has us focus on the, on this truth, man, that we, we will be, uh, what you call a laughing stock in front of the people, man. The scriptures go into that. It says, um, that the residue of men might seek after Yahweh by Shem Yahweh and all the Gentiles, which are Israelites that, that don't know the Israelites. So as you see, we're on the highways and byways. And they, like I said, nobody inquires about that. That's talking about the people that's Hellenistic. Upon whom my name is called, said Yahweh by Shem Yahushua, who doeth all these things. So the Lord is doing all these things, man. It says, know unto power that all his works are from the beginning of the world. So we are coming back into this truth. We was with Yahweh by Shem Yahushua in the beginning of the world, man. And two-thirds of our people 
What it wasn't. They was created later. It says, Wherefore my sentence is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to power, but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollution of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. For Moses of old times have in every city them that preach him being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. So the Lord had us in the ancient world preaching these things, man. And we was with you, how about Shimei Al-Shai, and we followed Moses closely, man. The men of the Lord made the hopeful elect. Those was the, you know, the men that followed Moses closely, man. So like I said, I always say, man, Lord willing, I was a part of that number, man. Because it's, it's a mighty work the Lord is doing, man. The Lord is doing all these things, man. And you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you don't even know why you even, um, why you, you know what I'm saying, want to get into scriptures like this so much, man. It's the Lord putting that spirit on you to pulling you to do it. You know what I'm saying? You be like, man, I, I just got to get into scriptures, man. You, you can't. I can't like I like that. I can't even watch TV, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I watch I watch a game of football. I watch the whole football season. I, I I never I never listened to one game but the Super Bowl. That was the only game I listened to. For the most part, I had a game on, but I had a shit on mute. Listening to the lessons, man. Reading scriptures. Listening to the lessons. Reading scriptures. Looking for information, man. Seeing what you know what if the prophecies coming to pass. Because the Lord has a spirit on us continually in this in this way, man. And I said to Wadi Yahab Hashem Yahshua for blessing me with that spirit, man. Continue to encourage me um, to, to do lessons, man. This is Hosea 3, and I'm going to start at verse 4. It says, For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king and without a prince and without a sacrifice and without an image and without an ephod and without teraphim. Ter ter Afterwards shall the children of Israel return so we we went all this time without without a basically without a leader, man. We went all this time without a leader, like like a Moses, in other words, the whole nation of Israel. I'm speaking about. It says afterwards shall the children re, children of Israel return, and we have returned to, to Yahweh by Shimei Al Shai. It says and seek Yahweh by Shimei Al Shai their power, and David their king, and shall fear Yahweh by Shimei Al Shai and his goodness. In the latter days, man. And that's what we have done, man. We have returned to Yahweh Bashem Yahusha, and we're seeking that king. And that king, I, 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 like, I, I got I got I believe and have faith in Yahweh Bashem Yahusha, and I believe the men that taught me. And they said, uh, they, they was going into how uh, King Masha is uh, King David. And, and that's part of the doctrine. So if you believe in the doctrine, you have to believe what these men present to you, man. You know, I never met, like I said, I never even met none of the apostles, man. But they, they, I believe that they are the men of the Lord, man. And I believe that, <laughs> that's just my personal opinion. I believe that they was part of, part of one of the, the disciples that was walking with Yahweh Shah. I mean, that's just my personal opinion. But they, you know what I'm saying? I, like you said, King David is a uh, King Marshall. And I believe that, man. Like I said, I never met now, none of them. It's just by, just through faith. You know what I'm saying? But. And you know what I'm saying? I know it was a while ago. It was like this this King King David demon that was jumping on me and they claimed they was King David. But like I said, um, like through Apostle Tahar, Apostle Gabar, they believe the King David is King Marshal, and I believe that as well, man. And um, and like you said before, I, like I, I seen um, uh, what was it um, it was a man preserved in a casket, man, that uh, America went over to the Middle East when 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 the war in Iraq was uh, first kicking off, and it was a uh, was it was it, I forgot his the name, um, Nimrod, and his body was preserved perfectly, and they you know, had they had things in a casket, but they went over and got his uh I think they got his DNA and shit that, but that's man I, I don't can't tell you I can't confirm that for sure. But his body was preserved like he just died a day ago or two days ago, not even a week ago. And I believe through faith that it probably more than likely that's the way King King Masha body is preserved now. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, it's just it's just, it's just by faith, you know what I'm saying? What I believe, uh, what the apostles believe, I believe as well, man. Because they taught me this truth and I believe that they're, they are sincere men and, and they, they teach a correct doctrine of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh and like I said, that's my own personal opinion. But um, 
I believe through faith that King Masha is King David. This is Deuteronomy 30. Deuteronomy 30. And I'm going uh, to start at verse... I start at verse 7. The point I want to get is in a 11. But let's start at first. Yeah, let's start at verse 7. Because when all hell breaking loose, is when the Lord is going to going to um, collect the hopeful elect, man. This is uh, Deuteronomy 30, verse 7. It says, And Yahweh Shem Yahshua, thy power will pull. No, this ain't what I want. This ain't what I want. This ain't what I want. So lock you. Jeremiah 30, I want. That's a good scripture, though. Jeremiah 30, that's what I want. Verse 7, it says, At last, for that day is great, so none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, man. All hell breaking loose. But he shall say, but he shall be saved out of it, the hopeful elect. For it shall come to pass in that day, saith Yahweh Bashem Yahweh shall have hosts, that I will break his yoke. From off his, for off thy neck, and I will burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves on him, of him, Salah. But they shall serve Yahweh by Shem Yahushua, their power, and that's what's happening right now. And David, their king, man. And we're gonna, we, through the Spirit, something major is gonna happen. The Lord is gonna show all his, uh, all his uh, miracles, man. In this time, man. So we like I said, like Apostle uh, Gabar, Apostle uh, Ramla, Apostle Tahar. I always say they're gonna raise him up, man. And I believe that. Uh, I believe that to be true, because I mean, if they, if the Lord preserved the, the body of Nimrod to the T, why not uh, King Masha? But like I said, that's just my personal personal belief. Believing what the apostles and the elders teach, man. It says, but they shall serve their. They, they shall serve you how about Shimei Yahusha their power, and David their king, whom I will raise up. Unto them. So the Lord said he's going to raise him up unto us. So that's that's a miracle the Lord is going to do, man. And a hopeful elect is going to know that when that time comes. He says, Therefore, fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, save how by Shemiah Shad, neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar and thy seed from the land of their captivity. And we're in the land of our captivity, man. He says, and Jacob shall return and shall be in, in rest and be silent and none shall make him afraid. That's when we go into the kingdom of heaven, man. And the Lord going to give us some spiritual powers, man. So we're going to dominate, dominate people, man. And nobody's going to make us afraid again, man. So we'll never worry about going into captivity. It says for, verse 11, it says, for I am with thee, saith Yahweh by Shem Yahusha, to save thee. Though I, though I will, though I make a full end of all nations, whether I have scattered these, so the Lord is going to make a full end to all these nations where we will scatter that, all nations. I have it was scattered thee, yet will I not make a full end of thee. So two thirds are going to going to perish, but the hopeful elect is going to make it. But I will correct thee in measure, and I will not leave thee altogether unpunished. So. You know what I'm saying? We are going to have martyrs, but the majority of the hopeful elect is going to make it, man. We're going to be saved out of this captivity, man. And this right here is, is a blessing, man. The Lord put the Spirit on you to even give, you want to give your life for him, man. So through the Spirit, man, we are not going to be fearful when that time is coming, man. We're going to be protected by Yahweh by Shem Yahushua. Because the Lord said we're going to get it now. The Lord said he's going to be our guide. So the hopeful elect are going to be guided through the Spirit to to safety. This is uh second edge of sixteen. I'm gonna drop down to verse seventy. It says, For there shall be in every place and in, in the in the next city a great insurrection upon those that fear Yahweh by Shem Yahusha. And that's the time of Jacob's trouble. They shall be like madmen sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear Yahweh by Shem Yahusha. That's talking about these two thirds, man. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of uh, cast, cast them out of their houses. He said, "Then shall they be known who are my chosen, 
and they shall be tried as gold in the fire. So two thirds of our people are going to be destroyed, man, cast out of houses and different uh, different uh, atrocities and different uh, um, deaths going to be put on them. man. we know that in Jeremiah 15 and 1. And down about five, five or six, tells you, you know, what 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 death these people are going to be lined up for. But the hopeful elect are going to be the, the you're going to know who the chosen is, man. He said, because they're going to be tried as the gold in the fire, man. It says, Hear ye, it's like it, hear O ye, my beloved, said how about Shemyasha. He says, My beloved, behold, the days of trouble are at hand. But I will deliver you from the same. See, same time of Jacob's trouble, the Lord said he's going to deliver us from the same, man. Be not afraid, neither doubt. The Lord said, don't doubt. Man, be not afraid, neither doubt. For Yahweh by Shem Yahushai is your God. So the Lord is going to guide us in a time of need, man. You know, so I can finish it up. But for the most part, that's what he's going to do. He's going to be, the, he's going to be our God. And the God of them that keep, his, keep my commandments and precepts. And who's keeping the commandments and precepts? The hopeful elect. Two thirds or not. It says, and the God of them whom keep my commandments and precepts of Yahweh by Shem shall power. Let not your sins weigh you down, and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. So you know what I'm saying? You got you're gonna have a lot of issues in this flesh, man. You can't keep all the laws that your commandments perfect in this flesh. But don't let those things weigh you down, man. Believe and have faith in Yahweh by Shem is he's gonna be your God in that time. Because we got a reward, man. Uh, men of the Lord that, be, that believe and have faith in Yahweh by Shemiah Shai, that didn't waver, that you know, bleed in, in this doctrine, bleed in this truth, and to death, the Lord got us a great reward for us, man. And man, that, that's worth that's worth dying for. This that alone, man. The 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 the, the, <laughs> the blessing to be crowned by Yahweh by Shemiah Shai, man. You can't pay for that, man. It's all about having faith in Yahweh by Shemiah Shai, man. This is Revelation 11. I'm going to start at verse 11. He says, And after three days and, and, a, and a half, the spirit of life of Yahweh Bashem Yahushua enter into them. That's talking about the men of the Lord, man, that spirit. And they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them, man. So great fear is going to fall on our enemies to see us raising up, man. And that's us now, preaching on the highways and byways, man. Fear is on these, these other nations that see us, man. We see, they see us out in the middle of a, um, in a major city, man. They, they, they like, man, what, what is they doing, man? They take pictures and shit. You know what I'm saying? But they fear what, what the Lord is doing. And through the spirit, they don't know what the Lord is doing, but they see it us. It's like, man, something is different about these, these men right here. Verse 12, it says, and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither. And they ascended up into, into, it's like it. They ascended up to heaven in a cloud. The heaven, sitting up in the heaven in the cloud is going into those, uh, what the world call UFOs, man, those chariots. They're going to see chariots cover the earth, and they're going to see so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans, man, ascending up into those chariots, man. And their enemies beheld them. So the Lord have to rescue for rescue you from your enemies, man. So you got to be in a, you got to be in a place of difficulty for the Lord to rescue you. So there's no reason the Lord to save. That's why the Christian doctrine is, is garbage because why the Lord go save you? You claim you saved. What are you saved from? Why are you still here? Because hell is coming. All hell is going to break loose. Why are you still here? This is Wisdom of Solomon 5, and I'm going to start at verse 1. It says, Then shall a righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as afflicted him. And made no account of his labors. And that's where we are now. We stand in great boldness in the name of Pal Yahweh Shem Yahushah. In front of those, our people and other nations, the other heathen, the heathens, man. Two thirds of our people and the heathen. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear. And they shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation. So far beyond all that they look for, man. And that's going up in those UFOs. They call them, the Lord call them chariots. So they're going to be amazed and strange to these people, man, because they're going to think the, the men of the Lord got abducted. But we're going to be abducted from the nuclear missiles that's going to hit ground zero. It says, and they repented and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves, this is he, this was he whom we had sometimes in derision, a proverb 
of a reproach, so they talk bad about us, man. What is he? What is he niggas doing out here teaching the Bible? Why they ain't in church? Why they ain't got jobs? Why they Why they believe in wearing believe in a, 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 a they don't believe that the Lord is a so-called black man, so they think that, why do you believe in a, a man that ain't coming for them, man? But they're going to say in verse 4, it says, we fools accounted his life madness and his end to be without honor. So they're going to think, well, the Lord ain't, ain't going to save them. They're they going to get abducted and killed, man. Esau going to kill them, man. But we're going to be, we're going to be, we're going to be in, 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 in a good, get a, in a good condition when you have about Shemiah Shah because we have faith in him. And he's going to be our guide in that time, man. It says, we fool accounting his life madness and his end to be without honor, man. And that's what they look at us now. It says, how is he numbered among the children of power? How did he make it? How did the Lord save him? Because they're going to know when the UFOs come down, the so-called UFOs, I say it like that because we know they're chariots, but the people that don't know, they're going to think they're UFOs. It says, how is he numbered among the children of power? And his lot is among the saints, man. How he make it? How the Lord save him? Why the Lord save him? Because we believe and have faith and prophesied it daily. And we went on the highways and byways confessing our love for our power, man. And World War Three is the return of our Lord, man. Yahweh Bashim Yahushah. So that's the reason why we have faith in Yahweh Bashim Yahushah, man. We see it clear. We can see those chariots coming down and beaming us up out of here, man, destroying America with thermonuclear missiles, man. We can see it, man. This is second address two. And I'm gonna start at verse 44, man, because this is a great reward, man. This reward right here is priceless. Nothing is gonna be equated to this. This is a uh, second address, second address two and forty-four. It says, So I asked the angel and said, Sir, what are these? He answered and said unto me, These be they that have put off their mortal clothing and put on immortality. And we put off this world, man. And we put on more, put on immortality. And have confessed the name of power. Now are they crowned and receive palms. So we 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 put, we confess the name of the Lord, man. These other nations, these other nations of people are not confessing the name of the Lord. Even these Israelite groups are not confessing the name of the Lord, man. So these these men are clothed with with um, immortality, man. They, they confess the name of the Lord, man. Now are they crowned, man. So you're going to receive a crown of Yahweh by Shem Yahshua on your head, man, and receive palms. Then, ask, then said I unto the angel, what young person is it that crowneth them and given them palms in their hands? And it's talking about Yahweh Shai, man. Man what, a man, what a blessing that'll be. Even to even see the Lord face to face, man, you gonna man, you gonna break down, man. Verse forty seven, it says, "So he answered and said unto me, It is the Son of Power, woo, whom they have confessed in the world. So that man, that's worth dying for, man. This that crown of life that the Lord is gonna bless you with. That's worth your 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 life." It says, "Then began I greatly to con 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 commend." Them whoo, that stood so stiffly for the name of Yahweh by Shem Yahushai. See, that even the angels are going to commend you for standing stiffly for the name of the Lord, man. Nothing is worth that, man. Not no house Esau can give you, not no, no clothing, a record deal, no bullshit like this, man. This is worth every, every, every blood, drop of blood you got in your body, man. That, that blessing right there. It says, Then the angel said unto me, Go thy way and tell my people that manner of things and how great wonders of Yahweh by Shem Yahushua thy power thou hast seen. So he told him to go his way, man, and um, tell tell the people, man. So through the Spirit, the Lord had the apostles, and elders, guide us this way, man, and, and bless us with, with the with the way the Lord is going to bless you, man, for standing so stiffly for the Lord. This is Galatians four, and I'm a, uh, one, and I'm gonna just get the point in verse four. It says. I'm going to start at verse 3. It says, Grace be to you in peace from the Most High Power, the Father, and from our Lord, Yahweh Shahamashiach, who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world. Man, the Lord is going to be with us, man. World War Three 
is going to be the introduction of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, man. In the end of, uh, end of uh, verse 4, it says, According to the will of power and our Father, man. So the Lord will save us from an evil, wicked world, man, that we had to to, to be subject, subjected to, man. So Lord willing was edifying. Let me get five. Let me get five. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. So, man, Lord Williams is an edifying lesson. Uh, to the next time, Shalom.